Okay, I think we're rolling. Yep, you can see it now. There we go. Okay, well, thank you everybody for uh, tuning in. Today we have a very special guest. I'm talking to Alexandra Joulet from McGill. Yeah, welcome. Thank you for inviting me, Adam. And Alexandra is a PhD candidate, candidate? Uh, coming close to the end of your uh, PhD is there hopefully <laughs> <laughs> we don't have to we don't have to put a, an actual date on it but I know that's a little bit awkward for, uh, um, for us I, let's say I'm maybe two-thirds in okay yeah yeah that's we don't have to be more specific than that but uh does time means anyways nowadays right yeah <laughs> <laughs> um but you are a chemist at McGill yes indeed what kind of chemistry do you do you do? So I would say that my field is specifically uh, green chemistry. So it's everything related to do chemistry, sure, but in a more sustainable fashion. So we are not inventing new reactions, uh, but we are thinking of new ways to make those reactions that are super useful for everybody because chemicals are everywhere on everything. Uh, so making those same molecules and products that are very useful, but in a greener fashion. So reinventing a bit the wheel in a sense that we've been doing chemistry the same way for years and we've, we've made all those great molecules, but now we have to step, take a step back and rethink a bit how we are making them to be a bit more eco-friendly and sustainable because the way we do chemistry right now, it's not the best. <laughs> it's useful. <That> sense. <laughs> but uh. Cool. Green chemistry. So... You do that, but it seems like you also have another full-time job that you do. You <laughs> I think that's a very good way of describing it. <laughs> yeah, wow. so uh, I've been involved in science communication and outreach for as long as my PhD. Pretty much, so it's, yeah, I think it's been four years. That's, that must be it. <laughs> 2016. <laughs> More or less since you started at McGill yeah. or did yeah. a little bit before that or? Um, I think I was very curious about it before that, but I was still like in undergrad. I didn't do any master. So I jumped from my undergrad to my PhD and you know, I was still young. And then I, um, I was curious about it, but I was not really involved in it. I was more the one that like brings some facts to like family dinners, but like oh, chemistry stuff again. Like, okay, we got it. Everything is a chemical. Yes, we know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so it was nothing very concrete, but I was always very keen about it. And like uh, every time I go back to France to see my family, and I stop in Paris to take the plane, and we go to the Science Museum because I really love it. And I think I've been, I've been there. I don't know many times. Like as a kid, every single vacation we were going there as well. Like so, I think I'm always been like super keen. I would say science, but doing science communication and outreach myself since my PhD started. Um, I think it started because, uh, so well, at first I was offered like an incredible opportunity and I took it, but also because I realized that for me, chemistry is like super cool, like the best thing ever because chemistry is everything, as I just said. And it's fun when you're cooking, you're doing chemistry, like you mix stuff, you, it explodes, it changes color. Like for me, it's like the best thing ever and it's so cute. Uh, and people are like, oh, you're a chemist. I'm like, wait, what, what does that mean? What do you roll your eyes? Like, what, what is that? Uh, and I realized that for them, chemistry were like this mad scientist that wants to destroy the planet. I'm like, wait, 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 no, this is not my PhD. Like, I'm trying to do the opposite, I swear. Like, I'm a nice girl, right? And I'm like, okay, so we need to actually communicate on that. Like, there is a lot to do on changing the image of, of chemists. And scientists in general, by the way, because yeah. it's not only chemists. <laughs> Chemistry in particular, though, as a fellow scientist, I still kind of see chemistry as like uh, the closest thing that science has to hey. magic. <laughs> not bad, not bad. Just, I just don't understand. It was always my worst subject, and I, I, I still see it as, as potions almost. So I'm not going to deny that it does not look like that sometimes. That's, you know, I'm putting that out there. Mm. Um, and also, there are a lot of different, very different fields of chemistry, but I agree that chemistry synthesis 
even for me, sometimes it's very like, okay, so you mix stuff and then you get a white powder and then it bubbles out and all like it's, yeah. So this is not really what I do in the sense that I don't do like those total synthesis and like those 20 steps stuff and all. Mm-hmm. Um, like it's, it's my PhD is more on making materials uh, to do catalysis, which is like a huge field of chemistry on its own. Like making catalyst is the only way to do chemistry in a way. Like I mean, to in industry, everything goes to catalyst. Otherwise, if you have to wait for a reaction to happen, it just does not happen, or it happens in such a long uh, time frame that industry doesn't care about that. So catalyst, but like it's the less glamorous thing to explain what catalyst does. It it makes a reaction happen faster, on all those like. So it's not very glamorous to say, but I feel like it's but, the biggest part of chemistry research, actually. Maybe yeah, that I'm sounds... There's like, numbers on that, and I'm wrong, but that's... <laughs> when you ask people what they do, I feel like everybody does, like, almost everybody does uh, catalysis. Wow. And it's a bit blurry, I think, to explain to people. Like, it's not very visual to explain to people, how oh, do you do that? Yeah. Um, but it's essential. As I said, like, all the industry, or, like, almost everything in the industry relies on, on catalysis to make new stuff. That's... That's this chemistry, pretty much. <laughs> yeah, that's a yeah. I guess that would be hard to describe to somebody who's not involved in the the science world because it's so seemingly far removed from something that they would touch day to day. Exactly. Interesting. Um, and for my family, it, it it took them a while to understand why I was doing all of that. Uh-huh. I'm like, well, the table in plastic in front of you, you comp- but who made the plastic? You cannot just mix two powders and wait for it. It doesn't make plastic. There's so many steps and s- almost all of them. I don't know the, you know, the process uh, yeah. of making like, all these plastics and all, but like, there is definitely catalyst involved somewhere somehow to make all of that. Because cool. um, when you cook, you also kind of put catalyst somewhere somehow, you know what I mean? Oh, yeah. Like, because enzymes are catalysts as well. So even your own body is a catalyst. And I think that when I said that, I was like, wait, Say it again? Like, wait, 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 like, <laughs> what? <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, like, what you do, like digesting, what do, what do you do? <laughs> yeah. So as far as science communication goes, uh, once you started um, doing that, it seems like you got yourself involved in quite a few things. And at this point, now you are, what, the director of Pint of Science Canada? Indeed, indeed. So... Um, so when I came back to Montreal for my PhD, uh, I was offered uh, to be um, the coordinator for the Montreal chapter uh, in English. Mm-hmm. So I was like, yeah, that sounds so fun. Let's do it. And I was this <laughs> first week PhD student, like, yeah, that sounds cool. Let's do it. Uh, and I loved it, honestly. I've met so many people from different fields and they were all super like nerds like me, but also keen uh, about sharing science uh, like across campus, but beyond that as well mm-hmm. and it was nice to have people that could relate to my enthusiasm about science on yes they all think that chemistry is weird but they also all like bubbles and explosions um so it's i was yeah like i was very happy to meet mm-hmm. other people and be able to uh, organize events in bars where people could gather and they could like explain that science to others and we had like a lot of positive feedback and it was cool to see um, people from different fields merging and also like undergrads be like, oh, this is what research looks like. That looks pretty cool. And also people bringing their friends who are not scientists to, to have like a beer, but also chat about science and be like, oh, that is what you guys do on campus. That sounds pretty cool. <laughs> yeah. So, so coming from like growing up in Ontario and stuff, um, I only kind of recently have started to see these types of events popping up. These like uh, science for everybody, science in a pub sort of uh, things. But my understanding is that this Pint of Science Festival, not only did it not start in Canada, but it's been going on for a long, long time. Yeah, uh, I always mix up the dates, but I think it's <laughs> 2013 that it started okay. in the UK. But actually, like the first um, like event, let's say. So there were um, two researchers in neuroscience, uh, I think at, in London College, I think. Um, and they were, they were working on, on few diseases like uh, Parkinson on the, like stuff like that that people can really relate to like it's very people know what Alzheimer looks like mm-hmm. um, and then they actually invited uh, people to come to their lab and give them a tour and like I guess there were a few lectures as well and like it was it was more like a, a field trip than an event in the bar at that stage um, and, I thought, and I think that the following year um, they were like okay 
if we have people that were okay to come to our lab, they're definitely going to be willing to go to a bar. <laughs> so instead of bringing people to the lab, the following year, they brought scientists to a bar. And this is how it started. So in the UK, the following year, France joined. Uh, and then I don't remember the, chronic, like the chronological order. But last year, we were, I think, around 20 countries. Uh, so happening at the same time. So it's a three-day festival, but it's almost four days because I realized that it goes from oh. uh, New Zealand to us in... Uh, so we had Nanaimo and Victoria last year in BC on Vancouver Island. So I was like, hey, guys, actually, like, it's pretty much like a four-day festival at that point. <laughs> That's so cool. And uh, up until this year, I guess this year is going to be a little bit different, but uh, up until this year, the way that it worked in Canada is you had a, a bunch of different satellite um, festivals happening all in the same dates right different cities Indeed. and everything yeah so we, it was uh, so three cities uh, in 2016 in, in quebec uh and then it exploded all around all across the country and uh, so last year was my first year as, as director and we got up to 25 country uh, cities sorry across canada so we went from newfoundland to vancouver island uh, and then each uh, city had his own team and they were inviting their local speakers to their local bars and everybody at like 7, 7.30 p.m. local time was starting to have a beer and talk about science and that like all night in few bars in the same city for three days in a row. That, I keep forgetting the numbers, I really suck at that. You know, uh, well. I'm a chemist and I don't do math, this is why, you know, like you can tell. <laughs> we can always uh, look up the numbers. Last year, yeah, but like last year we had, I think, 360 presentations, so speakers, uh, like 500 volunteers across the country. Uh, that, yeah, that's, amazing. When I that, I was like, that's That is a lot of scientists having beers in bars on weekdays. Yeah. And it, as far as like topics go, it could be anything, right? It's, it seems like uh, it's kind of whatever the organizers are looking for. Is there ever like a, like a theme that you guys aim for or? Um, so we, we try to cover all the themes in a sense. So I know that in Montreal, we had six bars in French and six bars in English. And then all of them are like one theme. And that theme goes for three, um, for three nights. But one theme can, is actually like physics, uh, chemistry, and astronomy. So it's not really like the same theme because like you would not mix those people at the same conference usually. Right. Uh, but it means that like one night was chemistry, one night was astronomy, for example, and stuff like that. And but then you have a bar, like sometimes like hundreds of meters uh, further, which is more on, like medicine stuff. And then if you take like the subway for like one stop, then you can have a bar which is only ecology, biodiversity, um, like planets in general stuff. You know, <laughs> like it's I'm tr like it looks very blurry, but it's all because I wanted to give people the room for creativity or like don't put barriers, like don't just Google ecologist you can actually find so many more, like especially like for this year, for like the online festival, I've discovered field of research that I, I kind of knew, but just forget about it. I'm like, I don't know, like it's, somebody is doing a, like a whole group is focusing on breast milk. And I mean, I, yes, of course, everybody studied that. Like, I mean, of sure, course, yeah. I'm <laughs> focusing on that. I just did not even think about it. And I would have never think of Googling, oh, like breast milk researcher in Canada. Like, and I don't remember exactly who I found Megan, but I think that somebody tagged her on one of my tweets to suggest, to suggest her as a good speaker. I was like, oh, sure. Like, that sounds terrific. Like, I've, I've never heard of somebody doing research in that field. Um, yeah. Let's try out. So it's all the fields at the same time, uh, but we try to put them in categories so we can have something organized. But at the same time, I mean, honestly, there's no limit. Yeah. Uh, and especially right. because last, since last year, we are trying to, incul, to also include um, social sciences. So for example, this year in Montreal, we're going to have two talks uh, from people who do research in history. So one of them uh, is a prof in, uh, in Quebec. And uh, I think his, race, like, at least his thesis was very focused on uh, the French Revolution. But he actually worked with Ubisoft uh, to include like, like actual historic facts uh, into uh, the Ubisoft get games. So that's something that I would have never think. Like, I, like this guy is very famous in Quebec because he has an amazing YouTube channel. But beside that, it's something that Panasonic would, would not have think of including a few years ago. And the other is a student in Texas, like she's in Montreal, but she's in Texas. 
uh, and she studies sh shipwreck. Like she's a, a marine archaeologist. Oh, wow. Who thought it could exist? Like, I mean, obviously people study some stuff like that because now it sounds obvious, but you would never think of Googling that to invite them to give a talk in a bar. I mean, not in a bar because no, it's online, but you got it. <laughs> yeah. Wow, that's crazy. Um, so yeah, that said, uh, the, the structure this year is, it's got to be different, obviously. So <laughs> usually, <laughs> in previous years, uh, it's all taken place at various bars around town, but uh, this year, not so much. Um, so this is, this is necessarily shrunken the number of speakers, right? We went from 360-ish yeah. last year to, how many do we have this year? So this year Roughly. we have 45, no, sorry, 54 presentations with 55 speakers. Okay. Across, yeah, three days. And this year we also put like events for kids uh, during the day. Like, I mean, I think honestly, like I call them kids friendly, but it's more like death friendly. Because honestly, like I think it's for all ages. It's more like, can you not work <laughs> at in the middle of the afternoon and <laughs> watch that. <laughs> mm -hmm. But I think every, like seeing the topics, I'm very keen about those as well. Uh, uh, yes, I think the, the vocab used is definitely going to be a bit more targeted for kids. Uh, but the topics are amazing. And I think that everybody could enjoy that. <laughs> yeah, I talked to uh, Ben Davis Purcell. He, uh, he used to be in my research group. Uh, so oh, I, talked, cool. I talked to him yesterday about uh, the stuff he's going to be presenting. And awesome. I mean, he yeah. smashes particles at uh, the Large Hadron Collider and he's going to be doing the pint of milk. So I mean, I'm so excited. <laughs> yeah. Like I, when he reached out to me. Yeah. So one of the, that's, again, one of this, this random Twitter mystery that happened, like he reached out to me and he's like, yeah. so I'm stuck in France right now, but <laughs> I'm from Ottawa and uh, I work at the CERN right now and I'd love to give a talk. Oh, and then we chatted a bit. I'm like, yeah, sure, please. It looks amazing. Yeah, that's like one of the more hardcore things you can do in physics. And I mean, he's going to present it for people between the ages of 10 and 20. He'll have something to talk about that, that <laughs> everybody can grab onto. I'm excited to see that. So these are not like soft, easy talks. Yeah, well, no. Soft, easy. I mean... Yeah, you got it. Yeah, uh, they're yeah, accessible to everybody. Yeah, and I think that they, I mean, actually, I'm sure there is one talk uh, on the quantum tunneling. Okay. Uh, and so I'm a chemist, but I still have some, uh, like, cold sweat when I get quantum. <laughs> uh, but actually looks amazing, honestly. So I'm very excited mm. for that as well. Like, actually, like, this year, like, I think I was, like, yeah. I made like a little gift for myself and I think I invited a lot of my crush on uh, a lot of them. I thought they were just going to ignore my emails uh, and a lot said yes and they were super excited about it and I was like, oh, oh, I guess it's happening. And then this small like, okay, I guess let's do a few events online. It's going to be nice because people are bored at home and we all miss each other. It became a pretty big program and people are emailing me like, wow, how did you get those people on board? Like, did you actually have that person? Like, did you actually email that person? And I'm like, I tried it out and they said yes. And here we are. <laughs> yeah, worst case, they're going to say no or it ends up in the, the trash or something, right? Yeah. <laughs> so I think I, I still don't really realize how cool the program is for this year. Like, I know it's very cool, but I think it's actually pretty impressive. Like, we have an yeah. astronaut. Like, the guy went to space twice. And I'm like, yeah. he's never going to answer my email. Like, come on, this guy has definitely all the things to do. And he gave so many talks before, you know what I mean? Like, and I'm like, hey, Dave, <laughs> would you like to give a talk in a bar, but which is not in the bar anymore, but you get the idea uh, um, in May? <laughs> and he said, yes. So yeah. he goes, hey, really, I'm giving you a talk. I wonder if... From uh, Toronto, but, you know, yeah. he went to space. <laughs> He's not in space now, but he was yeah. twice. Twice. <laughs> and twice. Yeah, there twice you go. Twice indeed. <laughs> You're good. Yeah, I think he's on the same day as Ben. So I. <laughs> yes, actually, so Ben and him are giving uh, the first talk in English on Monday, eleventh, in the okay. afternoon. So yeah, maybe maybe a few of the little of the the housekeeping details. It's Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Yeah, May eleventh to thirteenth. And there's several time blocks, right? There's the pint of milk, which is in the afternoon, and then the pint of science, which is in the evening. Indeed. And also, like, I put different times for the French and English events, so they don't, okay. so they don't overlap. So, speaking on, in, in Quebec, Ontario time, 
uh, it's 1 p.m. for the French events uh, for kids, and then I think it's 3.30 for the English events for kids, and then we have 7 p.m. for the French events, and 8 p.m. for the English events for adults, teenagers okay. as well. Yeah, we yeah. are. Uh, but everything is on our, is on our website, and I think it's, there is a back, nice big table with all the topics and all the speakers, and you can pick, and it's going to be hard because they all look amazing, but they're going to be available in, uh, later. So like, if you sign up, and then you can, you can access them all afterwards as well. Oh, awesome. I was going to ask if they were going to be recorded. So they're going to be recorded in the sense that you can access them after the talks, but you need to register before because you cannot access that. If you've never logged in, you cannot right. uh, show up uh, in a few weeks and be like, oh, that, that, that thing months ago looked pretty cool. Uh, you have to register in advance. Ah, okay. And that's pintofscience.ca, right? Indeed. Awesome. I can't wait to uh, look at the, the full timetable. This is going to be like, instead of going to like a music festival and having yeah. those like, <laughs> stages that you go to, this is, this is going to be my festival this year. <laughs> it's like people told me, I was like, oh, so you have lined up like a, like a music festival and we have to pick a scene and I'm like, like a stage. I'm like, yeah, yeah, that's, that's pretty much it. You got it. <laughs> uh, yeah, like, it's a lot because, I, so I mean, it, I feel like we all have our own interest, but otherwise they are all so different and so intriguing and like it was hard for me and then I keep getting I keep, I keep getting emails like can I give a talk and I'm like well it's 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 in a week so it's it's pretty full by now but also I could not accept everybody that emailed me because I don't remember how many like speakers reach out to me on top of the one that I reached out to mm -hmm. but I'm like I, we cannot handle that many people online <laughs> I'm still like oh if the wi-fi of anybody fails like that evening it's over and I'm already worried about it, so I'm, I don't want to. Add, I don't want to add more speakers. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, that's amazing. It's and you managed to put this all together pretty. Uh, I mean, you didn't have all year to prepare for this. That's that's for sure. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So one of the things so we had so we had the whole program was pretty much like done for the May events because we didn't change the date of the in-person events. Um, and then at first we so we postponed it for September. That was the plan initially. And then I realized that, well, I was home, I was bored. Everybody was missing each other. And everybody was bored. And like, science is actually pretty important right now. Maybe we should actually focus on that. Um, and then a few science communicators kind of suggested that we should do stuff. I was like, okay, let's do it. Let's do a few events. And then those, oh, let's do like, four five six events begins oh we are 54 oh okay yeah i i that's so why i think i was so overwhelmed by the positive uh like atmosphere around that like public was like yes yeah, please do it speakers were like yes i really want to go to the talk i was like okay i just need to send a lot of, of emails and and do like the biggest puzzle and weirdest puzzle I've ever done to match everybody with some with another speaker. And because we have two speakers per night with a trivia quiz in between. So we'll be like, okay, so we need to, I need to match everybody two by two within three days. Kids, <laughs> French. Uh, uh. <laughs> yeah, that was a big mess. Uh, but I think it turned out okay. <laughs> yeah, it, I mean, this looks amazing. I'm, I'm so excited. And I... I think that it was also the opportunity to bring people that are, they don't, they are not part of France usually. Uh, so instead of taking all the Montreal or Toronto speakers online, I was like, okay, let's postpone that so we can actually meet in person and have fun with our local scientists. And that's because that's the idea behind front of science. But I was like, okay, now that it's online, there's no limit. So this is Oben can join us from France. Uh, and we have a lot of other Canadians living abroad that can join us. Um, they would never come or like fly to Montreal to give a talk. You know, this is, no, this is completely unreal. Mm -hmm. um, so this is what happened for a few speakers that I was so happy to have them like joining in from so four different countries overall, I think. So France, the US, Switzerland, uh, and France. Uh, and also like people from more uh, remote places in Canada that we usually don't have access to because I just don't have a team uh, in the Yukon or uh, in um, on France in the World uh, Island. Mm -hmm. 
uh, not yet at least. Uh, but this year, so we have two speakers from the Yukon, including one that is so far north that I had to admit I didn't know that people could live that far north of the Yukon. I, so I, I learned something just because, it, you know, just speaking to him, I, I learned something. Uh, so it's, yeah. And we have another speaker from uh, White Horse. Uh, and then, yeah, so somebody like, like a chemist that I really love uh, is, 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 is like his pictures uh, on Instagram, on Twitter of uh, fluorescent um, solutions are just amazing. So Brian Wagner is a prof uh, of, of chemistry over there and he, he posts on the, um, using the hashtag like fluorescence Friday. If you want to check that out on it, honestly so pretty on you don't have to be a chemist to just uh, to, to be in love with that it's wonderful honestly i am very biased but still it's it's very amazing <laughs> uh so yeah i reached out to him like okay so you probably have never heard of us but i actually know you and i really like you but i couldn't even like i was never given the opportunity to, opportunity to invite you because you're just too far but now please there you go <laughs> and he was like what beer science <laughs> sure <laughs> that's cool do you think um, do you think this is going to change how kind of science works in the future? Just the fact that you're able to um, you know involve people so far north seems yeah. like it well, seems that like is this... a very good question, and I I kind of ask myself and I'm like, okay, just focus on doing this thing because you have three weeks to make that happen, so Fair make enough, it happen, yes. <laughs> and then we'll see. Uh, but yeah, like it's a it's a very good question, and I also I'm excited to see from where people are going to tune in as well. Uh, I wonder if people that usually don't have access to our events or even limited access to scientists and science in general, are they going to tune in next week? Um, and that's something that I would, that I'm looking forward to. I want to see, because I mean, I love people in Montreal and Toronto, you know, like it's a bit of, like, a lot of, a bunch of my friends are living there on Vancouver. Like it's, we are all so far away, but we are all, within our community, we have access to a lot of stuff. Yeah. Uh, but it's also nice that for once we can have speakers, even if you're in Montreal and you have access to so many scientists, for once you have access to like others uh, as well. So that's nice. But also if people from like very small cities don't have access to our events usually, this time they can. Um, I'm not looking very, very often because it's getting too much, but uh, I've seen people from like very small places in Quebec uh, registering. So I'm very excited. And also, yeah, like Crow, Alberta, Ontario, like I've seen... I've discovered new cities again, <laughs> uh, but it's nice. And I think that I would like that to be a sustainable thing, uh, but it hasn't happened yet. So I'll right. see and we'll see what it, what, what it evolves. Uh, and I think that we're also going to all be sick of being on Zoom the whole time, the whole year. Uh, but at the same time, it gives all the opportunities. So um, so I'd like to, I think that it's something that we should definitely think about. And I really like your question because it's something that I've been wondering myself mm -hmm. as well. So it's, I'm, on, I'm glad to see that I'm not the only one thinking about that. Yeah, uh, it almost sounds like now, how uh, conferences have sort of adapted. It seems like you could probably do something like that. And maybe the reason we haven't seen it yet is just that having the in-person events have seemed to work so well. You haven't really had to fix yeah. a problem. Actually, but, last yeah. year we had few... Uh, events that were on um, Facebook Live okay. at the same time. Uh, and like few, quite a few people actually uh, watched them, uh, but I think the quality was very bad. Right. Uh, like the image, the sound. Uh, yeah, and I think that at least this pandemic is giving us one thing, is the time and the tools uh, to rethink a lot. Uh, and this is why at first my friends were like, what? We're gonna do something online, like why? Or like it's gonna suck, like Facebook Lives. I mean, it's cool, but at one point you don't want to be watching hours on Facebook Live on top of your Zoom all the week. And I'm like, yes, but like, what else are we gonna do? You know, like we all do that. Just, at one point, like you know, you watch TV or you watch a computer. Like, what else are we doing? Or you read, you read few books? Okay, sure. <laughs> uh, and also, then what I showed them that you can do stuff online with tools that they didn't know yet, uh, and then. This one, like, the, the platform that we're going to use is called Crowdcast. And there are so many nice features. And I think that when you're part of, like when you're in this Crowdcast environment, you feel like you belong somewhere. And it's not only on your Facebook Live where you have all the stuff open, all opening around and you can be distracted on the sound, on the image, blah, blah. So on Crowdcast, you have the chat that you can really interact. Uh, we have tools to speak, to interact with the speakers very well. And also, I think you, you feel like you're part of something and you have like an atmosphere that surrounds you not as you're in bar because you don't you're not in a bar mm -hmm. but 
it's not only a Facebook Live. There is something more that thing. That is why I think it's worth doing all those events online. Um, so now that we discovered all of those tools and we kind of master how to use them, I think it opens the door, like the room to so many possibilities for next years and whatever. On same for conferences. I think people yeah. were like, oh, we cannot do something online. We just don't know what to do it. And I, how could we do that? And it's going to suck. And now we actually spend time thinking about those stuff and we can make something better in the future. Whereas, yes, last year when people were like, oh, let's do something online. They didn't really know what to st- where to start, how to do it. And they thought it was not even worth it sometimes. Yeah, the now, motivation was just low. But now we've yeah. had to solve the problem for everybody. So might as well. Yeah. <laughs> you got it. That's exactly my point. I was like, now that we're in it <laughs> yeah cool well this is going to be great I'm, sh- I'm sure it is uh who are you is there anyone in particular you're going to be tuning into is do you have any immediate recommendations <laughs> i know fluorescence friday is going to be a good one so yeah i was gonna say i'm um, this one i am very keen yeah. uh, but also so okay she's a chemist but it's not because she's a chemist that i that i'm really keen it's because she wrote to me uh saying what are the rules and i was like well, you give a talk and you can do slides if you want. You cannot do, she's doing the kids one. You okay. cannot, if you don't want to, like, I mean, it's up to you. If you, if you make it like a 15, 20 minutes. Yeah. And then my tools used to be having local speakers, not happening anymore. And then not doing fires in bars because the bars were not very okay with that. Now, huh, I was like, did you say fire? I'm like, um, maybe like, I don't know. <laughs> and actually, I'm not sure the details. She didn't tell me. I didn't ask. I don't, I don't want to spoil myself. But she's studying the chemistry of clouds. And, mm. and she's going to make clouds in her kitchen. I, I don't know what it involves. I don't know what that means. But just because of that, I need to see that. I need to see a chemistry, a chemistry prof uh, doing clouds on like chemistry in a kitchen. On actual chemistry, not just cooking. Because this is always called cooking. Yeah, kitchen chemistry. But she's going to make clouds with fire in her kitchen. And if Zurich is on fire on Wednesday 13th, I don't want to blame anybody, but I may have an idea. But <laughs> you cannot blame me for that. <laughs> I am sold. This sounds great. <laughs> I hope it's oh, something yeah. that I can also do in my kitchen. Yeah, you I'm just going to be very, very jealous. <laughs> <laughs> so that's one of the ones. But that, that's so many of them. There is... They, they are, we have two talks uh, um, like on, like, I feel like the theme is the sex education so one is on sex, sexting and one is on um, women's desire and I think it's talks that I would have never think of having uh, when yeah. I was running the Montreal events and so this isn't psychology is it or is this like um, a brain chemistry type situation like neuroscience so or one of the prof uh, is from UBC and she's from the department of, uh, uh, what's the name? Oh, you, oh, oh, I don't know the English name. Uh, Ojibwe? No, G- Ojibwe? Oh, no, oh. but oh, <laughs> I, oh man. I that's okay, it. we can link to it. We'll... <laughs> but that's the, oh, like, so women studies. But like, not studies as like, like women body studies. What's the name? Oh. UB, o, OB, OG. Oh. OBGYN? Yes, you got it. That's the one. Yes, thank you. So this is not neurosciences. It's very, like, I, mean, I think it's definitely linked to it as well. And I think that's something that uh, right. she mentioned in her abstract. Uh, but I think it's, it's not only okay. that. It's not, it's not only addictions and like brain stuff. It's, uh, right. like we have talked about that as well. Brain body chemistries and probably hormone responses and stuff like that. I would imagine. Uh, I'm just guessing. <laughs> um, so I think there is a part of that in our research as well. Uh, I mean, as like, because anyways, it goes back to chemistry every single time, right? Oh, well, there you go. <laughs> and uh, this is all you pick a fight with like the quantum physics people. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but for me, it's day. always chemistry. <laughs> <laughs> um, so that's, that's her background. She's so like from this uh, uh, field, but I think it's, yeah, it definitely bounces with uh, no sciences at one point. Okay. Like, um, yeah, um, so that's a few talks that I'm very intrigued by. Uh, on the person from doing the sexting uh, talks, so like Eva Bloom, I am not sure what's her background exactly. Um, 
maybe a bit more psychology in there. Okay. I honestly like I have so many names on so Oh yeah. Many, <laughs> and I know all of them and I don't know them at the same time because it's pe- like some of them I just send them a few emails and I never you know, oh, I you haven't seen fight. them face to face. I'm gonna invite them. <laughs> but I don't know them from anywhere on they are not in my field. Mm-hmm. Uh, like I you know, I'm a chemist, I know chemists. This is as easy as that. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Yeah. That's a, that's quite a range of, uh, and yeah, those, those talks sound like they were something that you wouldn't necessarily see at another science conference. This is, uh, yeah, it seems like something to tune into. It seems like pretty, pretty unique. <laughs> yeah. And I think it's also very fun that since I'm, since I announced to the speakers, would they going to be uh, matched with so like, who is going to be like the co-presenter of the evening? Mm-hmm. Because they also don't know each other for most of them. On yeah. they're like, hey! <laughs> or like they work on the same, f- or like on related things often, mm-hmm. but they don't know each other. And they're gonna be on the same stage, but from across the country and from across the world. And few of them, they were so cute. And like they actually like, oh, you matching with that person? I cannot believe it. Like I admire that person so much. Or like I'm gonna be the person like speaking like right after, or right before them. Like why are you doing that to me? <laughs> oh, that's so cool. Ben had a, a story like that with uh, his astronaut friend. So uh, when Ben first started at McMaster in his undergrad, the very first year, uh, they had a guest speaker. And it was actually him. And he kind of convinced Ben to get really involved in science and, and particularly the, yeah. So it feels like it's coming full circle and he finally got to meet this guy face to face. Oh no, he's the one like explaining like outcore physics to kids. And I, and I hope that one of the kids can be like, wow, you can do that. That is yeah. so cool. That's the dream. <laughs> to have and somebody like, respond like generations. that. <laughs> cool. Well, thank you so much. Um, I will for sure link to all the, the stuff that people need uh, when I post this. Awesome. Uh, any, anything else that sh- we forgot to mention? That ought It's to free. Consider? It's free, yes. But you do need to sign up. Yes, just because you need to access the links. That's yeah. all. But like, it's uh, straightforward, I think. If you have any okay. issues, email me. But I, I haven't gotten that many emails. So I think it's pretty okay. Compared to usually, I'm getting less emails. But like, as many people are, sing- are sending in. So I think right. that being online is actually less trouble than people expected. Which is a good thing for, you know, <laughs> future stuff. Yeah, I mean, we've been buying tickets online for years. So I think this is pretty natural. Yeah, but people were concerned when I suggested to move online at first this is why like i'm explaining so many stuff because i got so many concerns on it's fine because it made me think of stuff to look for and to look at um so that's cool mm-hmm. but i'm going to see that it's not too complicated and it seems to be going to be going well until the wi-fi bell is gonna bail on us <laughs> <laughs> yeah that seems like it's the only the only thing that could cause a problem at this point it seems like uh you guys are well on your way yeah, I think that's the one thing I haven't checked on my list, you know, make the Wi-Fi work. So like pray for like the God of like Wi-Fi God or whatever. Like I haven't figured out yet. <laughs> Maybe next year we'll have somebody who uh, who's done the research and they can present on on who you're supposed to pray to for Wi-Fi. <laughs> that is one talk I would really be looking forward to and I would not miss it. <laughs> that's for sure. Okay, well, thank you so much for coming on. Um, this was really fun. Oh, I can't wait you, to Anna. uh I can't wait to tune in next week. Yeah, me too. I'm very excited now. Like it's like I cannot wait. It's like I am so anxious because so many things can go wrong. They're like, okay, let's do it. We're gonna have so much fun. I cannot wait. So